All right, so we made some noise uh, that has made a few things dance around for us. So far, so good. <clears throat> That's exciting. But it would really be lovely if we could do something that was, you know, a little more compositionally interesting with all this. So what what might we do? Well, you know, I think we might do some really fun things with that. Let's back out here and let's take a look at our third base down here, stars. Now, I should say that we're going to go ahead and borrow our setup here, our camera light geometry and renders hop. No reason to make all those again if we don't need to. We'll stick those down here. Let's go ahead and attach a null to the end of this. And there's going to be lots of exciting stuff happening here. So uh, we'll come back to that here in just one moment. All right. So let's think about what we might do. Now, I actually want to come in here to our sphere and I'm going to go back down to not 0 0.01, 0 0.01 as our scale again, because I want these to be pretty tiny in the way they present themselves. This time around, I'm just going to use a noise chop and I'm going to attach it to a null, as you might expect we were going to do. All right, looking good. Now, in our channel, let's change this to be T, square brackets, X, Y, Z. Now, it's pattern matching, so we're going to get three channels out of this, a TX, a TY, a TZ. All right, there we go. We've got a lovely presentation of what uh, our sparse noise looks like. And that's, you know, that's pretty all right. That's, that's certainly interesting. I like it a lot. I'm not going to lie. I think it's pretty snazzy. Um, but what we want to do here is, or what I'm after, is I want to think about how might we use this to, you know, make something that was a little more kind of dynamic or interesting, something that was a little more kind of spatially compelling. So in my noise chop, I'm going to go to the noise page. I'm going to swap us from this uh, sparse noise to be random noise instead. Right now we're going to have just a random distribution of values. Uh, which is slick. That goes from negative one to one. All right. We could take our camera here, maybe, and we might choose to move that a little closer, right? We can kind of fill our entire screen with that. Bada bing, bada boom. If we looked at our geo, and we can use H to home, we can back out here a little bit, we can see this is actually a proper volume of random numbers, right? That's not quite big enough for me at the moment. So what I want to do is I want to go back to the channel page. And I think we're going to turn this up to say like 20. It's like uh, 20 seconds, or if we change to samples, that makes more sense. 1200 uh, points that are in here, which is, that's pretty all right. I like that. It's like a little, I think that's a little too much, but that's all right. What we'll do is we'll add a math chop in here and we're going to take advantage of one other parameter here in our math chop. We're going to, in our multi-add, we're going to multiply. So, you know, effectively what that's doing, right, that's just scaling. We're just scaling up what the distribution of our samples looks like. Uh, next up, let's go ahead and add a constant material. I want just kind of an emissive set or I want my points here to have a, an emissive kind of property in terms of their uh, their shading. Right, okay, so far so good. We might do something fun here, right? We might scoot this over a little bit. Uh, let's blur, do a little blur here with this business. And we could pre-shrink it a little bit and then turn the filter up on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna composite. And we will, we're going to use our first one and our second one. And what I want to do here is I want to just add those puppies together. So I've got some nice kind of glowy quality. Plug that back in here. And you can kind of get a sense that it's not going to take us very much work to start to make a pretty interesting um, kind of noise, or excuse me, an interesting kind of star field here, right? We could really start to dig in to what that might look like a little bit. That would be really fun. Now, uh, because we're only looking at this, well, you know, let's, we could do this. We could like turn our scale down. We'll leave that scale up. We'll come in here. 
Let me turn our radius down a little bit. We can make these a little bit smaller so they feel further away. Yeah. All right, so that's, that's good, but you know, I, I want a little bit more, a little more exciting stuff here. I'm gonna add another noise top here into our network. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and also add a lookup top. Now a lookup top's gonna be really fun and interesting for us. I'm gonna leave this in our bottom corner here. Um, because what a lookup is gonna let us do, and if we add a ramp, it's gonna be more exciting is a lookup is gonna let us replace colors, black to white, with uh, supplied colors that we're looking up from this reference ramp with, right? Um, this only needs to be one tall, excuse me, I think I want it to be like 500 long and one tall, great. We'll make it 10 tall, it's no different, it's just gonna be easier for us to see what's going on in there. And then here on our ramp page, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the key that's over there on the far right, and let's turn up the saturation. You can start to see what's happening, right? We could like make that dark purpley. Because what I wanna do additionally is I wanna do another composite. And I wanna to start to put those things together. So I'm gonna like plug these two puppies into one another. In my composite, I wanna use my first input to set our dimensions. And then I'm gonna use maybe over, right? Okay. And now without too much work, right, we're starting to get a, a kind of fun, fast star field kind of setup, right? You can imagine that the more you start to play with the periodicity of your noise and some other values in here, you can really start to give this some real shape and texture to it. You could also play with what your ideas are for how stars represent themselves, right? I mean, we're looking at this head on, so we don't need it to be a sphere. We might instead uh, choose a circle, right? We could use a circle saw and we could display and render this instead. That's awfully big. We gotta turn it down. Keep turning it down. All right, so. You know, okay, that's no different yet, Matt. Oh, I, I, I get it, I know, I know. Hang on, hang on there. Let's, you know, maybe turn uh, this into triangles instead. So it's got three divisions, right? I've been playing this game Astroneer, uh, and it's got triangles that are represented like this to kind of be stars. This is interesting so far, right? Now you might say, that's that's great, but those are all faced, facing the same direction. Okay. All right, well, let's pick a dimension that we want to rotate in. I don't want to rotate in X. I probably want to spin in Z. Okay, so let's go back to our noise chop. Let's go ahead and add a RZ channel. We're going to select out our RZ channel here. Boop. We're going to grab just the channel that is called RZ. We'll scoot this over a little bit. We will next, you guessed it, add a math chop. In our math chop, let's change this, right? We can scale it globally by, say, multiplying these values by, uh, let's do 180. I don't think we need to go full 360. And we could replace these and plug this all in together, great. And then finally here in our geo, on our instance page, we just need to set up that RZ is gonna be RZ. All right, great. Now we've got a little bit of rotation there in all these. If you decide that you want a little bit more scale in that, we can make that 360. So now none of them are gonna be facing the same direction, right? So there are lots of ways that we might think about playing with that. You might say, you know what, Matt, I, I'm still not satisfied with that. All right, fine, go ahead and transform. Let's add a transform SOP here. And we'll combine this one. We'll merge those two together, because why not? You do that. And here in this one, we'll spin this one on the, oops, on its Z axis, maybe a little bit to create a new shape. That's interesting. All right, we'll turn off the display and render for our first set, turn on the display and render for our second set. And now we've got a different shape that's actually being used to drive how our stars show up. 
So this is a fun way to start to think about how we might use noise to create something as simple and as interesting as simple, as interesting as a noise field, right? And, and fun about this, especially to think about, is um, because this exists in a volume, right, we can actually fly through this. So, you know, this is a playful way to think about how we might be able to uh, create something, a terrain, if you, you want to think about it that way, right? that we can actually move through in some interesting and compelling ways. That's all procedurally generated. It's all made for us already. We don't have to worry about any other kind of um, source material that we're using to put this together. We don't have to download any textures for it. We've got just our instances and a little bit of noise to help us figure out how we want to think about this, you know, kind of abstract space location. Okay, so that's all well and good. That's pretty fun. Uh, that's not too hard yet. Where we're gonna go next is next we're going to take the ideas and the concepts we've learned here and we're gonna to start to pull apart how we might use those in a more compelling way, especially when it comes to working with uh, a GLSL material and how we can displace vertices because that is where the real magic starts to happen. So hold on to your socks, it's about to get real wild.